pinagdiriwang po natin ngayon ang kapistahan ng transfiguration o ang pagbabagong anyo ni Jesus. Now, this feast celebrates an occasion when Jesus invited three of His closest disciples to go beyond ordinary appearances upang matanggap nila at ma mapagsaksihan nila masaksihan nila ang pansamantalang pangitain o glimpse no, tungkol sa tunay na katotohanan tungkol sa ultimate identity ni Jesus. Now what is what is his ultimate identity? What is his ultimate reality? Well, the three gospels which narrate this incident ng pagbabagong anyo ni Jesus, they all culminate in God's voice declaring, "This is my beloved." Ito ang minamahal kong anak. And these solemn words are confirmed by the dazzling light emanating from His face and clothes. In other words, ang senaryo na ito ay nagpapahayag, nagpapaliwanag, na si Jesus ng Nazareth ay hindi lamang tao tulad natin, but He is also a being of light. As the longer form of the creed states, Jesus is light from light, true God from true God. So that is the ultimate dimension of His being. Now, on this occasion of transfiguration, of His transfiguration, therefore, Jesus lets His disciples momentarily catch sight of His divinity. Kung baga, pinatikim ni Jesus yung tatlo niyang disipulo sa kanyang pagkadiyos. Why? So that when during his passion, he will lose even the appearance of a human being. No? Dahil ayon kay Propeta Isaias, na he will be so inhumanly disfigured that he will no longer look like a man. Kapag darating yung panahon na yun, ang kanyang pagpapakasakit kamatayan sa krus, Itong tatlo, itong tatlong disipulo na nakasaksi ng kanyang pagbabangungan nyo, nakatikim ng kanyang uh, pagkadiyos, they might look beyond the appearance of the disfigured Jesus. And they will remember the transfigured Jesus of today's event. In other words, ninanais ng Diyos na patatagin to fortify His disciples in advance. Ninanais ni Jesus na pagtibahin at patatagin ang kanilang pananampalataya sa Kanya in preparation for the impending great temptation their faith will undergo when they witness His passion, His crucifixion and death. Napakinggan po natin ang malinaw sa Ibanghelyo, ito ang minamahal kong anak. Napakasarap pakinggan kapag may nagsasabi sa inyo na ikaw ang minamahal ko. O minamahal kita. You are my beloved. 
but that voice the voice of God speaks to each one of us too since we are the body of Christ the continuation of Christ through space and time we are Christ's brothers and sisters and so that voice yung tinig na yan, yung boses na yan is a voice is a voice that speaks from above and from within and it whispers softly in our hearts you are my beloved ikaw ang minamahal kong anak na lubos kong kinalulugdan mga kapatid alam po natin na hindi po madali pakinggan ang boses na yan sa gitna ng mga iba't ibang boses na nakapaligid na nakapaligid sa atin sa panahon natin ngayon it certainly is not easy to hear that voice in a world filled with voices na bumubulyaw sa atin, dumidikta sa atin, sumisigaw sa atin, hindi ka mabuti. You are no good. Wala kang silbi. Boses na nagsasabi sa atin, kasuklam-suklam ka. Hindi ka katanggap-tanggap. Pangit ka. You are nobody. Unless you can demonstrate the opposite. These negative voices are so loud and so persistent that it is easy to believe them. Mas madili tayong, mas madili nating napapakinggan at napinapaniwalaan itong mga boses na nagdidikta sa atin, boses ng mundo na nagdidikta sa atin na napakalaking pagkukulang natin upang tayo'y sumaya, upang tayo'y lumigaya. Remember, yan ay napakalaking bitag para sa atin. It's a great trap. It is the trap of self-rejection. Yan ay isang bitag upang hindi natin pahalagahan ang ating sarili. At wala tayong makita, kundi ang kakulangan ng ating sarili. Alalahanin po natin, self-rejection is the greatest enemy of a person's inner life. Why? Because it contradicts sumasalungat ito sa boses ng Diyos na nagtatawag at nagsasabi sa atin, minamahal. Yet, being the beloved, what each and every one of us is, expresses the central truth of our lives. Beloved. Pinakamamahal is the one word that summarizes the life of any person, including you and me. We must remember that one word when we leave this church and go back to our lives. That is our ultimate definition. Tayo ang pinakamamahal ng Diyos. Yes, we may be sinners. Lahat naman tayo ay makasalanan. Lahat tayo ay nagkakasala. We may be psychological misfits. We may be morons or ugly or mataba. We may be inadequate in every conceivable way. But all that is all that 
is surface appearance. What counts in the last analysis is that voice of God telling us kung sino talaga tayo deep down. You are my beloved. Ikaw ang pinakamamahal kong anak. The world around us, no? itong mundo na meron tayo ngayon, lalong-lalo na ang mass media, social media, the advertisement mafia, at ang mga baluktot na filosofiya ng ating panahon are always telling us that we are worthless that we are unlovable, na hindi tayo katagap-tanggap unless, no? That we, unless we at once and simultaneously good-looking, kailangan slim upang matanggap ng mundo, kailangan mamahalin at magara ang ating pananamit, talagang may tatak tanyag o famous kailangan successful kailangan makapangyarihan kailangan ng mamaneho sa mi pinakamamahal pinakamahal na sasakyan o ginagamit ng ganitong up to date up market na mga gadgets o nagsusuot ng mga mabahaling uh, pantalon at kumakain sa iba't ibang restaurant na mabahaling at napakarami pang iba those voices yung mga voices na yon coming from the world around us are directly contradicting God's voice telling us you are my beloved because God's love for us is unconditional. Nice kung ibahagi sa inyo yung sinabi ni Pope Francis before the youth. No? Dahil um, they are celebrating the World Youth Day in Lisbon, Portugal. Sabi ni Pope Francis sa mga kabataan na nandun. In fact, meron tayong representative dito. Sabi ni Pope Francis, while social networks know your names, while social uh, media know your tastes, know your preferences, ang lahat ng ito ay hindi nila lubusan na intindihan ang iyong pagka unique. This does not understand your uniqueness but rather your usefulness for market research. The illusion of the virtual world attract us and promise happiness, but later show themselves to be vain, superfluous things, substitute that leave us empty inside. Kaya kahit ano pang habol natin sa mga bago at anong uso para akala natin makamta natin yung saya at ligaya at matanggap natin, mapansin tayo, matanggap tayo ng mga kapwa ng, ng pamayanan, wala po. Hindi yan magbibigay ng tunay na kaligayahan. Mababalot na lang tayo ng utang dahil loan dito, loan doon, makapalit lang, makabili lang, sorry, nag-isahaya tuloy ako, makabili lang ng anumang in, anumang latest. Kasi akala natin yun ang makapagpasaya sa atin. If you notice, sa isang banda ng buhay natin, nais kong bumili ng ganito na gadget. 
Nako, ako nang pinakamasaya ng mundo. And then you bought it after one week. Ayun. Nauuhaw ka na naman sa bagong labas na modelo. Hindi hindi mapapawi at walang kabusugan ang pagkauhaw natin kung ito'y tinutugaran natin ng makamundong bagay na mga dinidikta sa atin ng mundo. Sisters and brothers, God, His love is unconditional. It is free. Why? Because it is His nature to love. And so He loves us. Even those, including those people who don't love Him. But the world tells us that we are lovable, that we are worthy to be loved only if we fulfill, no, pag na-fulfill natin yung napakahabang listahan, the list of impossible conditions only if we are perfect. Yan ang sinasabi ng mundo. Yet, God's love does not require any single condition. It is given. It is free. And so each one of us is faced with a choice. Shall we trust God's gentle voice? Or the world's lying voice, deceiving voice, shouting the opposite? Talikda na po natin. Isang tabi na po natin yung boses na araw-araw na dumidikta sa atin at nagsasabi sa atin na kulang tayo. That we are inadequate. Let us make the leap of faith and believe with all our hearts the gentle voice of God in the depth of our hearts. Ikaw ang minamahal kong anak na lubos kong kinalulugdan. 